Hello, everybody, and welcome to 15 and 15. We are here every day, weekdays, Monday through Thursday in September at noon time to hear about cool teaching ideas, um, stuff related to you and your work. So for today, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague in the collab, Matthew Cheney. Welcome, everybody. We are going to be talking about blogging for fun, for practice, and for scholarship. To, uh, to begin, we're going to need to go back in time a little bit. Back to a time when the internet was young. Can you hear it? It's coming back. Yes. That's giving me Magical. PTSD. Good old days when Netscape was the browser that ruled the world and we were all creating World Wide Web services. Among these were things that got called weblogs originally in 1997. And then in 1999, Peter Merholz coined the term blog as a shorter version because he liked the idea of weblog becoming we blog. And so, um, Blogs were born. They actually existed before the words. There were things like the Open Diary, which still exists, I discovered. Um, it's still going, uh, which goes back to 1998. Uh, and then, of course, there was Live Journal, which was very popular with lots of folks. Um, Live Journal was as the way they said, so come and create your very own Live Journal. Let the world know the story of your life as it happens, whether they want to or not. And that's really the feeling of blogs is that uh, the sharing of life, the sharing of ideas of links, certainly links were a huge part of the early days of weblogs, um, whether people wanted it or not, uh, as a way to, to make the, the web more human in many ways. Blogger in uh, the early 2000s was a site that brought the word blog really into the world and still exists. It was bought by Google in 2003, and um, somehow or other, Google has so far failed to destroy it uh, or get rid of it. But this was what Blogger looked like around 2002, um, and, which is when I got first involved with it, and uh, we'll show you that in a moment. These were the days of the web 2.0. Some might remember when we were making the web more interactive, um, more collaborative, when remixing and convergence were the words of the day. And then eventually, you know, the word blog entered the OED. So it became an ordinary word we use all the time, even still as blogging has changed so much in the last 10 years. One of the things that kept blogging working really well, and I think is still important to the, the idea of how we use blogs was uh, RSS, which uh, stands for, depending on who you ask, either RDF site summary or really simple syndication. And RSS was an easy way to, uh, to follow lots and lots of different things because it would take the new posts of um, blogs and journals and websites, whatever was new content and filter it, send it to you. Uh, it still exists, it is still used, uh, and is a great way to uh, create feeds. This was Google Reader. Um, this was the easiest and most popular way to collect RSS feeds for a long time. And you can see on this one, which is really just a screenshot I found um, searching for images. Uh, this is one that actually is about marketing ed tech blogs. This um, particular person was interested in both marketing and education, and they had a folder in Google Reader for all of their marketing and ed tech blogs. So you can see that uh, it actually looks a lot like um, Gmail. Um, and you could look at all of the new stuff that had come out and uh, really keep track of a huge amount of information that way and organize it. Unfortunately, this was one of the things that Google did get rid of, uh, one of the many things they're famous for getting rid of their products. And so it only existed from 2005 to 2013. And I, I truly remember the day that Google Reader died uh, because I was a huge user of it. It was just such a, an efficient way to keep track of what was going on um, on lots of different sites. There are uh, similar things nowadays still. Feedly is probably most popular. I know Reader is one that a lot of people use. And there's even one called uh, the old Reader, which tries to simulate what Google Reader was. Uh, but that moment on July 1, 2013 kind of broke a lot of things within the, the world of blogging. Uh, and it's never really recovered. 
the other thing that broke everything was social media because a lot of people were using blogs um, before Facebook and Twitter for the kind of things that we use Facebook and Twitter for these days. So Facebook and Twitter also were the death knell of blogs as we knew them back then. But uh, before we talk about what blogs have become, uh, a little personal sort of side journey here. So in 2003, on a computer that looked awfully like that one, I created uh, a blog called The Mumsimus. And uh, this is what this is the earliest uh, screenshot I could find from the from archive.org, the Wayback Machine. Uh, so this is the earliest surviving vision of the of my blog back in 2003 from October. And you can see from the early days, I was um, mixing both my interests in uh, literature, media. Um, science fiction, fantasy, horror, writing, and academia, because I was teaching high school at the time. And this first uh, post that you see at the top there is one that was about uh, calling in with my class to the old NHPR show, uh, and uh, what was Laura Canoy's show that uh, was uh, The Front Porch, was it? The and a friend exchange? was the exchange, yes. Uh, the exchange, and uh, a friend of mine was on there talking about Fahrenheit 451. So we called in from the phone in our class. We had a, an actual landline in the classroom back in those days and called in, and it was a great time. So, here, even back in 2003, when I was 12 years old and teaching, uh, we it shows uh, the mix of academia and of blogging and of um, all the fun stuff. This is what it looks like these days, a little bit more up to date, um, but still on Blogger uh, for now. Uh, Gmail, um, Google has not been supporting Blogger as well as one might like because uh, it's very, very far behind WordPress and such these days. So I'm considering for the 20th anniversary of, of the Mumsimus shifting it over to, to somewhere else, but it's hard with something that's this old because it's got all of its um, good Google ratings and such. So it's easy to find with searches. Um, so it'll be an interesting move. We will we will see. Um, so I also have another blog that I use primarily for academic work and uh, to keep them a little bit separate from the sort of everything blog of the Mumsimus, which has this long history and identity. And then uh, the Finite Eyes blog, which is very specifically academic stuff and stuff we do here in the collab. And I think of this as a kind of ecosystem that also links back to my personal website, which is much more static than a blog. I you know, update it occasionally when something new comes out, but that's about it. Um, and these all contribute to a kind of ecosystem that also includes social media. So a lot of the stuff, if you were to look at the archives of the Mumsimus, you would see uh, that it changes a lot once I start using Twitter and Facebook more, because a lot of the things that I now use Twitter and Facebook for, I used to use the blog for. So the identity has changed, but it is still useful within this network of um, self on the internet. So blogs live. Public writing lives, uh, chronicles of life and thought continue. And I want to look at how some of these have changed for, for other academics. Um, so one of them who's been on, on the web the longest is um, Timothy Burke, who is a professor of African history at Swarthmore. This is uh, what his site used to look like in the late 90s. Uh, and you can see it's got frames and all of that fun stuff we used to love in the 90s. Uh, but he is still going, and he now has a Substack newsletter. He had a he kept his blog going for a long, long time, and recently transitioned it over into a Substack newsletter, um, which is a, an interesting uh, move on his part. Great stuff. It's it's free to subscribe to. He does not charge, um, or at least require that you be a paid subscriber. So you still get lots of stuff from him in the same way that you used to with with his blog. But um, now it's sort of, you can choose to have it emailed to you, you can use it as you would any online newsletter, or you can look at it on um, online. Um, here's another approach from my, my friend Sonia Tafe, who uh, has had a long running live journal. Live journal got bought by the Russians and turned into sort of a content farm thing. Um, so people mostly moved away from it, but with dream width, you can uh, emulate the live journal experience in many ways. Uh, so here is Sonia, who uh, is a wonderful poet and writer and classicist. She has a, a master's in classics from Yale, I believe. Um, she does great movie reviews and ideas and poems and life stuff in all the ways that we love live journal for. 
Um, Blogger still continues. I'm using it. And here is Amardeep Singh, who uses Blogger as the basis for um, his, again, long running website. Um, really interesting stuff, doing a lot with digital humanities. And then there's just really traditional sort of newsletter. Um, Ruth Franklin, when she was writing her wonderful biography of Shirley Jackson, created uh, a newsletter to sort of keep interested people up to date on what her research, where, where her research was taking her, what she was doing, um, and the progress of the book overall. Uh, this uh, 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 newsletter that I'm showing you right here, this particular issue of it was one of the most interesting because she had had the great luck to find a stash of very important Shirley Jackson letters uh, stuffed in a barn where nobody had looked at them for a good 40 or 50 years. Uh, it was very exciting. And here's Patreon, uh, which is used by lots of people, particularly um, a lot of writers and artists and filmmakers as a way to uh, both can take to have a, a way to connect with audiences, but also to raise some money um, because Patreon has all sorts of different levels of uh, funding that, that subscribers can provide. Uh, I subscribe to a few Patreons, including one I really love from Willow, uh, Caitlin McClay, who is a film critic, a trans film critic, writing uh, a lot about horror uh, and uh, just a fascinating point of view. And so it's been a thrill to really follow her work um, here's a, a one that's up there on Blade Runner um, from back in June. And it feels, um, from the way she's doing it, it feels a lot like the old days of blogging because she um, she will occasionally just send out brief updates and things. Um, but there's a, there's a really active commenting system on Patreon um, that her followers at least um, really uh, pick up on and really use a lot. So there is a certain feeling to the old community days of blogging. It's just taken on different forms. And some people would even say these days that the internet is a blog uh, because so many of the things that we were back in the old days of web 2.0 aiming for have now become sort of very ordinary uh, online. And even WordPress, which uh, originally I think began as a blogging platform is now the basis for so many uh, major websites that are far more than just a blog. So I think about it in terms of our scholarship as a way of having public, uh, doing public work, of sharing it in whatever way makes sense, of sharing work that isn't complete, work that is fragmentary, uh, work that's very drafty. And I think that can help us all very much as uh, as academics and as people, because it relieves some of that pressure of needing to be perfect and needing everything to be multi-peer reviewed, et cetera. Um, peer review is a very different thing online when you have commenting systems. Uh, it's, and I think that these are, these are ways that we can rethink our academic work for uh, a world that may not appreciate it as much as, as we would hope. So that's what I've got for you. Um, the question really is what does it mean, not so much what does it mean to blog, but rather what might it mean to think in public. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Matthew. That was wonderful. Um, I am going to stop recording, but we invite anyone who's here to feel free to stick around for a couple minutes if you want.